saying the government has allowed an illegal chief and skin by the Nayeri, the overlord of Mampusis, to be brought into Boku overnight. This is the cause of the present escalation in the conflict. So this one rests in the ambit of national security directly, 100%, and the government is culpable. Hold on. It's heartbreaking. Mm. It's heartbreaking. And um, it's so unfortunate <laughs> that when I was coming, I was listening to you, and you were saying you have very good friends in Boko. I, I personally also have my classmates and former working colleagues who are from Boko and still live in Boko. And it's so unfortunate what is happening. Do you know Sally for combat? You, you might not know. Yes. Him. Okay. And this dawn, there was a funny but not funny thing that happened. So my regional um, anchor, who is in the Upper East region, decided to call me around five, five thereabout, and he joined me to a conference conference call, mm. and he's. He said that he didn't want to hear it alone. And what I was hearing was like, when you have gone for prayers and people are clapping. And then I was like, what, are you, what, 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 what sound is that? And your guess is as good as mine. This was a beautiful sound. It's very scary. I mean, I cry. It was through the phone. Yeah. I, I, could, I could still... I, I keep hearing them all the time. I, I was scared in my room. And he was like, Nana, this is what we hear. This is like a bell to wake up. And so it's not, it's, it's no joke. And I, I come in here, I was like, if this is what is going on and we find political communicators come to sit on sets and try to play politics with the situation. That is because they have not been there. We sent a music van to Boko Quarries and to Upper East Quarries. And you mean the movement for change the, the alliance? The movement for change in the alliance. You know, we sent the uh, music van to them. And when it was delivered, it took the driver who took it coming back to Accra two days because he didn't know what was happening there. He you no know, going there during the day it was more like a normal drive through. So he decided to return and he had to find cover. And I think that sometimes we need to tell the story as it is to draw that picture. Not to scare people or to create fear and panic, but to give people and authority the understanding of what is actually happening. Roland, it is reported that eight lives were lost yesterday. But the little the calls I made there when, could be more. when I got the topic for this discussion from the place. It's, it's, as the expert said, it's, it's not just eight. This is what has been reported. But the gentleman also gave me another figure. And I think that national security should be up and down. There is a historic um, background to, to this whole conflict that dates back into the Asian days. The, the war, pre, pre independent the pre period. period. The Bia war with the Kusasis and how it all happened there. It's a complex story, all right? And I would want to agree with the security aspect. Unlike the case that happened in Dagon, that has to do with two brothers, these are two different tribes that actually came together for a reason. And there is a need for us to move forward. And so in dealing with this matter, you need to apply something different from what happened. I would not want to play politics with this. Because, I mean, listening to Alfred, 
I was watching on Facebook while well, you were watching it. Yes, and coming and when Alfred was talking about you know being surrounded by six constituencies and five or so of them being NDC and for that. But matter, he was not wrong. He was not wrong in in itemizing the demography. But I think in my view he was wrong to have related <laughs> the instability in the area to the fact that the area is pro NDC. I think he was talking about how leadership need, uh, needs to be brought to bear. Thank you. No. He was <laughs> trying to say my understanding that the place would not know peace because it has been surrounded. Because he made an, a follow-up that if it were the NPP, you understand? We are trying to settle mm -hmm. the matter. Mm -hmm. We are trying to massage egos so that they come to a compromise. At least. There was some stability in the area for some time. Before the court ruling and the lifting up of the uh, warrant and all of that. Yeah, about there three, was, three months. There was some three months and entering into the fourth month, yes. All right. And looking at what, is, what has happened over these two, three days or few days, I think that probably the court, if they had looked beyond just the issues that were brought to them, all right, they would have waited on their ruling and allowed certain you know discussions on the table and i would want to join the many voices that are calling on the vice president to intervene he is the chairman of the police council and i think that he's very influential when it comes to that area i mean he's from one side he's very very influential the egos are high and so we need the high profile individuals who are from both areas both the Kusa, if we are able to identify very influential people from that place, as we are identifying very influential people mm. from the Imam process, let them come together. Mm. Let us all sit around the table. <coughs> let us discuss. Let us meet at the point and see. Because, Roland, this is a conflict alluded to, um, that, that is coming out of alluded rights and chieftaincy. And people will not just let go like that. Mm. This, the recent one, I'm reading and talking to people, it's been over 40 years. Just a quite recent one. Forget about what, what happened in the, in, the, in, the, in the colonial era. President Kufour was able to manage the situation. Atta Mills was able to manage the situation. During John Muhammad's time, there were some, you know, but he was able to manage the situation. We've been able to manage the situation up until now. And so, indeed... If what the security expert is saying is true, which some of us do believe, that there are some hands in it, we can identify those hands and publicly call on them to bring stability to the area. Let them make public statements. Let them be seen seated around the table. Mm. Let it come on national television. Let the youth in those areas see these persons who are influencing their actions mm. that is actually affecting development in the area see them discuss and agreeing to a peace call mm. and then we can can work so i think a, that a, a proper peace um or a roadmap a roadmap is needed a roadmap is unfortunately mr Alfred thompson yeah. fortunately to me <clears throat> I, in my view i think because the the chairman of the police council actually is an influential person from the you area. mean the vice president he's the chairman of the according to the constitution according he is. To, yes mm -hmm. i'm saying that since he's from the area i think that a call from him would not be bad now in my view a call from him would not be bad because in rating or ranking the persons of influence within the area i think he ranks top okay so let me put this into perspective we have members of parliament yes we have the vice president at the top chairman yes. of the police council of course yes but um, then we have members of parliament. Going to so. benefit uh, for the election will be the vice president. He's a presidential candidate. He's chairman of the police council. But we also have members of parliament. Yes. We have um, the... Unfortunately, uh, the majority the of them are from the, other, well. from the other side. Yeah. So I'm only saying that... And we have Hassan well, Ayaroga. No, yeah, of course. Even Yeah, Hassan Ayaroga. He just gave me a message yes. and I read it as well. So for me, I, I'm thinking that there's a certain nuance to this. 
okay and long-standing historical conflicts also need to be tackled the way they are yeah. and um, blaming or picking on whatever one says is not is not the way to go i think uh, i'm thinking i'm just moderating 